Since the late 1600s, crop circles have fascinated mankind. From their elaborate designs which appear overnight to the various messages that seem to be encoded within them. From the mid 1970s, around 10,000 crop circles have been reported worldwide, with 90% of those occurring in the Wiltshire area of southern England, a highly significant point we'll discuss later. Most fascinating of all, however, is exactly who or what is behind them. All things considered, three possibilities as to their origin seem to present themselves. One, being an as of yet unidentified group of crop artists who go out in the middle of the night to physically flatten down the stalks. Two, a government or military psyop for intentions and purposes we can only speculate on. Or three, genuine communications from earthbound or ET life forms. There's also the theory of meteorologist George Meaden that crop circles are the result of natural wind vortices, which may have explained the basic two three circle patterns prior to 1990. However, this theory has become increasingly obsolete as from 1991 onward of the more elaborate designs begun appearing. In other words, natural tornado like vortices may well explain circles like these. But not so much these. The complexity of modern circles, in fact, makes the very term crop circles obsolete. Formation seems to be the more apt term. So, in order to find an answer, two of these three hypotheses must be eliminated. So let's first consider that crop circles are done by an as of yet unidentified group of crop artists who go out at night in pitch darkness to make flawless, degree perfect designs several acres in size, leaving the field before dawn with no one the wiser. Well it's a convenient explanation but there's a few holes with this theory. Firstly, surveyors have estimated that it would take several days to flatten down the most sophisticated patterns and that's only after extensive measurements of the area. Even so, in 1994, writer Arthur C. Clarke hired five artists to make this 90-foot flower formation for a documentary, which in broad daylight took the team two days to make. How then was this 900-foot long formation from 2001 done in one night? Also, what these supposed crop artists are doing and have been doing since the 70s is effectively a combination of trespassing and criminal damage. Now, the authorities could be forgiven for not responding if these were seldom occurrences, but if you check cropcircleconnector.com linked in the description, You'll see that crop circles appear on a near monthly basis and have done for the last four decades in more or less the same area of Wiltshire, which is akin to a group of bank robbers robbing the same bank over and over with the authorities taking no action. So what does this mean? Well, four decades of crop circles with no clue as to their origin, with an altogether lax attitude towards them does not sound like the actions of a government when national security is concerned, because the presence of microwave radiation found in soil samples across numerous sites suggests a kind of energetic projectile being used in the circle's making, which may be why the circle phenomena are downplayed and blamed on people with rope and boards to allay public fear. Also, if we take a single stalk within a circle, we see that the nodes are broken at an almost right angle, not flattened as if they were pressed down physically by people with tools. These expulsion cavities, as they're known, are due to the intense heating of internal moisture bursting through the plant wall, which echoes the nature of microwaves and further supports that whoever's behind them, government or otherwise, is using some kind of energetic projectile. Again, this becomes a major concern in regards to national security, more for the principle of unwarranted violation of land than their destructive powers, as governments have proved in times past a willingness to endure political turmoil over trivial land concerns, the Falklands being one example. In light of this, are we to accept that the government is simply ignoring them, despite their repeated examples of seeking to both control and dominate nature? Surely a few well-placed CCTV cameras would solve the crop circle mystery once and for all, but that they turn a blind eye makes their stance on the circles all the more suspect. It's a case of what are they not telling us? The official response, however, can be found on Crop Circle Connector, which states that in 1990, a meeting was held with cabinet ministers to discuss the phenomenon and what implications there were regarding defence matters. Their answer was simply that there was no answer, which is a stance they continue to maintain today. A defeatist attitude, one might say, for one of the world's most affluent nations. And again, if we consider that crop circles tend to keep appearing in the same area of Wiltshire, England, surveying the area would be that much more easier. According to one study, nearly half of all circles found in the UK in 2003 were located within a 15 km radius of Avebury. Crop circles are basically falling into our lap in more or less the same place, which is mentioned is a highly significant point, as Wiltshire is home to many ancient megalithic sites and ley lines which pass through the area, such as the Avebury Stone Circles, Silbury Hill and Stonehenge to name a few, which would suggest that whoever's making the circles is harnessing the natural energies of the earth in some way. This ley line theory is one strongly supported by many crop circle researchers, and one which seems plausible given the amount of holy sites that sit along the St Michael ley line. 
It's clear that the area of Wiltshire is an energetic hotspot, and it seems no coincidence that more crop circles appear here than any other part of the world. They're so regular that there's even crop circle tours of the Wiltshire area. In spite of all this, despite crop circle researchers sitting out on the Wiltshire hilltops year after year, no circle has ever been caught in the making. So when considering how degree perfect the designs are, and with the broken and burnt stems suggesting non-physical means in their creation, we can likely rule out that the circles are made on sight as it were, but rather they're issued from afar by people and methods we'll continue to investigate. Now does this mean that man-made circles don't exist? Of course not. We see many man-made circles from humorous designs to corporate logos. But there's a clear difference in that man-made circles appear crudely done, are messy and uneven, and generally reflect the kind of task it would be to flatten down crops physically with tools. In other words, they lack the degree perfect precision of some of the more breathtaking circles. But if we entertain the idea that the circles are made by physical means, just take a look at some of these designs and ask how feasible it is that they were done overnight, in pitch dark, all whilst remaining undetected and leaving no trace, such as footprints in the stalks one would expect after a night of heavy labour. First up is the famous binary disc formation from Crabwood Farm Winchester 2002. Admittedly, this design at first does appear a little too Hollywood, but closer analysis reveals some intriguing anomalies, least of all being the sheer size of this circle. For here, we can see that just one of the dots we see on the disc the character is holding is at least a metre squared, rising to waist height. So if we look again, measurements taken of the area mark the length of the outer rectangle to roughly 110 metres. Can you imagine then in a pitch dark country field trying to make a glyph of this size using just a board to flatten the stalks? It's fair to say the size and logistics of such a task would be truly overwhelming. We're talking not one single flaw or error in an image the size of a football field in thick waist high stalks. Then we have the disc itself which according to CropCircleResearch.com is an encoded ASCII binary message which is a form of computer language. So starting from the centre and spiralling outwards we get a 1 if the crop is raised and 0 if the crop is flattened which when decoded reads Beware the bearers of false gifts and their broken promises. Much pain, but still time. There is good out there. We oppose deception. Could this be a hint from our galactic neighbours at the corrupt ruling elite? An elite that owns 99% of the world's wealth but promised democracy and equal opportunity. Who can say? It does however suggest we practice discernment and not succumb to illusions. And if you check the description, there's a full analysis of this circle by researcher David Flynn in his excellent Ouroboros Doomsday Clock lecture. But the mysteries of this circle don't stop there, for encoded within are even deeper messages which Flynn has expertly uncovered, as various numerological anomalies present themselves. Firstly, we have 59 lines making up the outer length and 33 measuring the disc diameter, which when multiplied give 1947, or 1947, the year of the Roswell crash. Also, 33% of 59 gives us 19.47. Of course, this isn't smoking gun evidence of anything, but it is worth noting. But the anomalies don't stop there, because when we count the number of ASCII characters in the disc, we get a figure of 151, which when multiplied by 33 gives us 4,983, which is the approximate number of miles there is in a straight line between the disc formation and the site of the Roswell crash in New Mexico. Then when we multiply 33 by 3.141, or the number pi, we get roughly the longitude of where the Roswell crash took place. Whoever's behind crop circles then seem to have a keen interest in this number, as there was even a circle devoted entirely to it. The Pi Formation, as it's known, appeared in June 2008 near Barbary Castle, which is another ancient site linked to the St. Michael Ley Line, and cleverly depicts the number Pi to nine places. Also, the formation appeared on August 15, 2002, which was almost 50 years to the day after a UFO fleet was spotted over Washington, D.C. on July 26, 1952. Again, there may be no connection, but the circle makers, as we'll explore later, seem to be keen numerologists. So when added to the plausibility of this being done by trespassers in the night, and the disc containing such a cryptid encoded message, it's time we started asking questions about who or what is behind them. If this was done by a group, then it's a deeply underground organisation who've successfully avoided detection for nigh on 40 years. Next up we have the Arecibo message, which was a radio broadcast sent in 1974 by SETI, towards the star cluster M13 in the Hercules constellation. The message was a series of binary digits which when formed into graphics creates the rectangular image we now see. It was written by Dr. Frank Drake of Cornell University with help from astronomer Carl Sagan. The message consists of seven parts that encode the following information. The numbers 1 to 10. The atomic numbers of the elements hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and phosphorus which make up human DNA. 
formulas of the sugars and bases in the nucleotides of DNA, a graphic of the double helix structure, a figure of a humanoid and the human population of Earth, a graphic of our solar system in which the sun is seen on the left and the Earth is slightly raised, and the dimensions of the Arecibo dish itself. Now it's important to mention that because this broadcast was more a means of testing newly installed equipment than it was a genuine attempt at ET communication, little hope was given for a response, and for 27 years was it accepted that the message was lost to the depths of space. But in 2001 a response was received in the form of a crop circle before the Chilbolton Radio Telescope in Hampshire, England. So if we look at the response, the initial sequence of numbers came back identical. Below that we see silicon added to the DNA suggesting that the senders may be silicon based life forms. Further down we see an identical set of nucleotides and a more complex and varied DNA helix structure. But then things get interesting for an image of the humanoid we get in response the typical grey alien with the big eyes and bulbous head. Then in response to our solar system makeup we see a more or less identical system which one could guess is actually our own. Except this time we see both Earth and Mars elevated suggesting the senders are present on both planets. But then we see Jupiter split into four, which could signify its four Galilean moons, the largest of its 67 moons orbiting the planet. And finally we see what looks to be an image of a crop formation which appeared a year earlier at the foot of the same observatory. As we can see the similarities are both a refractal like design with two wings around a central core. This could be interpreted that the message was sent from Earth, implying the circle makers are walking among us. A theory the raised Earth in the response would also imply. But then maybe it was just students with rope and boards at night, before the Chilbolton Observatory where meteorologists work around the clock. In summary then we can see that those behind the Chilbolton message could be the greys, residing within our own solar system on a neighbouring planet or one of Jupiter's moons, possibly Ganymede, a strong evidence support subterranean oceans, and also that in 1980 NASA astronomers detected an unknown radio signal emanating from it. Also the image of a human-like face came alongside the formation which bears a striking resemblance to the face on Mars. A little too sci-fi perhaps, but the Chilbolton formation itself is very real. Even after contacting the observatory myself, they say that even 12 years on, they know not the origin of the Arecibo response. We also have cases such as the Grassdorf formation from Germany in 1991, which wasn't so intriguing for the formation itself, which is quite tame in comparison to other formations, but more for the three metallic disks which were found buried in various points around the site. The three disks were of gold, silver and bronze and all bore the same image, which was the formation of the crop itself. Each disc weighed roughly 5 kilograms and was around 30 centimetres in diameter. It was discovered near the prehistoric site of Eckenstein dating back to 10,000 BC, which is a mix of ancient carvings, pillars and caves believed to be the site of various religious practices. This does however appear an isolated incident, as no other formations bear such artefacts, which suggests that the circle makers were able to look into the earth to where for centuries the discs had lay buried. We then have other formations containing various encoded information. As well as the Pi formation mentioned earlier, we have the Avery Manor formation of 2008, which depicts the position of the planets in our solar system on the 21st of December 2012, which you may know was the end of the Mayan calendar's long count cycle. Interestingly enough, just a day later, the circle makers returned and enlarged the sun to encompass Mercury and Venus, which may signify an increase in solar activity during and after this time. We also have other mind themed formations. We have a 2010 formation from the Vale of Pusey depicting the golden ratio to 10 digits, which is a formula we see in and across nature which seeks for perfect form and proportion. We see a formation showing the mathematical formula of Euler's identity, which is a famous equation linking several important numbers. We have the Mandelbrot fractal set, which is another mathematical concept. There's the fascinating two inch shroud formation of Wickham Green which shows a face emerging when the circle's two parts are combined. We have another Pi formation from 2011. We have more ASCII messages, one from Perino, Italy, 2010, depicting Einstein's theory of relativity, and one a year later at the same site, depicting A. Enki, the Sumerian god of life and renewal. We have another showing six months of a 29-day month lunar calendar, which according to some is a more natural and harmonious system of timekeeping than the Gregorian calendar. We have a formation depicting the chemical structure of melatonin, which is the body's feel-good hormone, as well as several formations showing the double helix structure of our DNA. There's also the Milk Hill formation of June 2009, which would be a Herculean task even with a hundred men in the light of day. 
and another binary message from Yanks 2007, the meaning of which is yet to be deciphered. So when things like this are appearing in our own backyard, it's clear why the establishment would rather keep us focused on soap operas and game shows. If they were done by people, why the preoccupation with mathematical concepts? Numbers being a universal construct would be the most likely means of communication for any non-human life forms. It appears then that the circle makers have a keen interest in the sciences, with a large portion of these containing an encoded message. These then seem to be the circles worth paying attention to, as a picture of Elvis is unlikely to contain any deeper message. The folks at CropCircleConnector.com believe the circles are teaching us a lesson in consciousness and its connection with the Earth, which again is supported by their location along ley lines and ancient sites. Crop circles, they say, may be showing us a new science, but then why would ETs fly halfway across the universe to make pictures in crops? Well, the same reason Columbus sailed to America to bring order to the red-skinned savages. Also, nearly everyone in the crop circle world agrees that their message is vitally important for humanity's current level of evolution, and vital in understanding our place in the world. Often referred to as temporary temples, crop circles suggest a more harmonious reality where we work with rather than against nature. Now as to who is behind them is another issue. Crop circles could very well be a government psyop, teasing the public with the threat of ETs in order to gauge our reaction. Think of the Rillen message which you can see linked in the description, or the War of the Worlds broadcast which caused mass hysteria in the 1930s. Crop circles could be nothing more than government or military experiments. If this is the case, why then do they focus almost exclusively on Wiltshire, and why not something more provocative than mathematical equations? Regardless of contrary evidence, crop circle debunkers insist it's nothing but people with rope and boards, such as Doug Bauer and Dave Chorley, or Doug and Dave, who in 1991 went to the media to take credit for crop circles. The men, each in their 60s, said they wanted to fool people into thinking UFOs had landed, and used nothing more than rope and boards in their design. After the media hype surrounding the two, many dismissed crop circles as the work of pranksters. To paraphrase Dave Chorley, being out there in the fields at midnight with a beer and a sandwich, wonderful! But despite their retirement, crop circles continue today. Some consider the Doug and Dave fiasco an attempt to muddy the phenomenon and convince people crop circles are nothing but the work of two beer-drinking pensioners, which for a while worked. But to debunk the debunkers, crop circles as mentioned have appeared globally in the tens of thousands. We also see circles appearing off-centre, in the sense that the stems are laid down a point that is not the geometric core, which is significant because the technique used by hoaxes is to work around a cord tied to a stake in the centre of the circle, similar in principle to a child swing ball toy. We also have circles with a layered effect, which involves crisscrossing patterns of overlapping stalks, suggesting an intricacy beyond the means of simple boards and rope. Also consider that only from the air can we see a formation, meaning that from ground level, even the circle makers themselves would have no idea how their designs appear. The fact that crop circles have been appearing since the late 1600s further debunks any modern involvement. Some of the best documented accounts include the case of spectroscopist John Capron, who in July of 1880 discovered multiple circular areas of flattened wheat on a farm in southern England. He describes, quote, areas of crops forming circular spots with a few standing stalks as a centre, with flat stalks spread evenly around, surrounded by a circular wall left undisturbed. Capron suggested that these flattened circles were the result of some cyclonic wind action. An even earlier account in the late 1600s tells of Oxford Professor Robert Plot's discovery of, to paraphrase, circles within circles, semicircles and quadrants found on arable ground and pastures. Plot also states the soil in his circles was much looser and drier than ordinary, which echoes the nature of today's circles. Expanding on Plot's observations then, we see various fields that carry a ghost of the previous year's formation, such as the Barbary Castle Dolphin of 1999, where even a year later and after harvest, the size, colour, Growth pattern quality and yield of the crops were adversely affected by the previous year's circle, suggesting something more than flattened crops is affecting the soil. The BLT Crop Circle Research Group with help from MIT even attempted to duplicate the conditions found within a circle, which included expulsion cavities and magnetised iron particles found within the soil. Yet despite using various technologies, the team were unable to replicate any of these factors and could find no natural origin as to the circle's making. They've also stated that those who've studied crop circles long term have regularly reported electronic equipment failure in and around them. The cause they verified was the presence of microwave radiation. Additionally, the effect crop circles have on electronic equipment seems to be more potent the more recent the circle. There's even reports from the US of harvesters failing as they approach a new formation.
Then if we look at some anecdotal evidence, locals to crop circles have reported strange buzzing noises, odd animal behaviour, balls of light and low-flying UFOs. We also have the story of the 1996 Julia set, which appeared beside Stonehenge in the space of 15 minutes, in broad daylight with not one of the dozens of tourists seeing anything. Which, if we're reminded of the two days it took to build this simple flower formation for Arthur C. Clarke's documentary, should raise a few eyebrows. We have a July 2009 story of an off-duty police sergeant spotting three ET-like figures at Crop Circle Hotspot Silvery Hill. We have stories of geese breaking their V-formation over a circle and deer circumventing them, as well as the bizarre accounts of women experiencing menstruation whilst within one. So does all this mean that crop circles are of ET origin? Not necessarily. The main argument this investigation is trying to put forward is less about ET involvement and more about crop circles not being done physically by people with tools. If we again return to the evidence that the stems are broken, not flattened, show signs of burning and of microwave particles found within the soil, the idea that crop circles are done by Doug and Dave's setup is as obsolete as Meaden's plasma vortex theory. There's also the theory of Daniel Harron of CropCircles.eu that the circle makers may be earthbound elemental beings, beings that are attempting to communicate scientific principles which may benefit our way of life and life on the planet. These beings would no doubt be aware of our irresponsible and reckless attitude towards nature, home to not just us as we'd like to believe. Which may explain how circles have evolved from simple patterns to elaborate encoded pictograms, implying more of an urgency for humanity to take heed and change their ways. With mass ecological imbalance, various plants and animals facing extinction, social and economic inequalities with a few controlling the many, it's clear that the alarm bells are ringing. The reason they choose Wiltshire, says Heron, may be twofold, either because the St Michael ley line may be their only portal to communicate, or that the UK being a powerful global centre would no doubt draw more attention to their communication attempts than if they were made in the middle of the desert. The exceptions to this are in fact the Chilbolton and Crabwood farm formations, which are unlike the symbolic style of the majority of circles because of their more explicit messages. Incidentally, neither of these formations appeared in Wiltshire, so it could be that crop circles have various sources, but the consistency in style within most circles hints strongly at a common origin. So what beings could Harren be referring to? Well, if we look to our own folklore, we see mention of gnomes, sylphs, fairies and the like, and fairy rings, which could be historical attempts to explain the crop circle enigma. Non-physical beings have been mentioned across history, and we're living in an age where our Wi-Fi and electromagnetic signals may have begun to negatively affect them. We can assume these beings do not have the ability to communicate intellectually, rather they use primordial symbols which transcend all language. And we're again reminded that many crop circles are rooted in numbers and mathematics, the language of the universe. Researcher David Wilcock believes crop circles could be used as reference points for time-travelling ETs. By keeping a comprehensive log of the various formations, he says, you could quickly scan through a large bank of different points in time. Once you see the formation you're looking for, you can then enter that time period. A theory lacking substance, you could say, but without any final understanding, all theories have their merit. And again, this is not an attempt to suggest ETs behind the circles, but it is an attempt to suggest how unlikely it seems that they're done by people on site using tools and physical labour. The evidence here presented seeks to progress from the notion of people with boards to an energetic involvement, which would be enough for us to start focusing on exactly who is behind them. But until that time, the circle makers will just have to remain ever patient until humanity is ready to wake up. No one can deny that wherever they come from, crop circles are art of the highest order. If we end then by examining the following circles, asking how feasible it would really be to make them in the dead of night, in the middle of nowhere with not one single flaw or imperfection, Doug and Dave? I don't think so.